Hi, and welcome to a video where we take a look at some deep learning object detectors such as RCNNs, SSDs, and YOLO. So let's start. What exactly is object detection? Well, it is actually the holy grail of computer vision. It allows us to do things like this. And you would have seen this before in our face object detectors and pedestrian and vehicle object detectors in earlier videos. However, those were limited to just one class. And if you were to add multiple classes, you would have to pile on multiple object detections and that would slow things down significantly. So we're taking a look at now some deep learning, some very advanced object detectors that make things like this possible. This is pretty cool, isn't it? Car, dog, horse, person in the back over here. So what exactly is this? Now, object detection, as I said in earlier chapters, is a mix of object classification and localization. Classification means determining what the object is, and localization means identifying the region or the bounding box of the object. And it's used in face detection quite often, which we've seen in previous chapters. Now, the difference with object detection and classification is that object detection doesn't just tell you whether an image contains a cat or not, but it actually tells you where the cat or the objects or animals could be in the image. So that's pretty cool. Now, non-learning methods of object detection included what we discussed earlier, which was horror cascade classifiers. And another one we didn't discuss in earlier chapters was histogram of gradients hog with linear SVMs that support vector machines. That's a machine learning classifier. And the reason we didn't discuss these is because they are pretty much outdated now because deep learning object detectors are significantly better and it can be used in a wide variety of applications that make it very powerful. But the reason why these aren't useful, although they are technically very useful when you're detecting just one object, that's why they're still very useful for face detection. However, when you try to apply this for multiple objects, detectors, it actually breaks down. It doesn't work too well and it can often be quite slow and that's because it involves an approach called sliding windows where you have to slide this window at various scales across the image and that's why it is not a very efficient method. So in 2014, deep learning object detectors had a huge breakthrough with something called regions with CNNs or RCNNs for short. And this achieved remarkably high performance in the Pascal VOC challenge. That is object detection data set that has been used to compete and score in computer vision journals and researchers to assess how good their object detection methods are. So basically ImageNet variation of it. And in 2014, as I said, RCNNs achieved remarkable success. Now let's take a look at how RCNNs work. So RCNNs attempted to solve the exhaustive search problem previously performed by sliding windows by proposing bounding boxes and passing these extracted boxes to an image classifier. So now how do we get these bounding box proposals? And that's where we use an algorithm called selective search. So imagine we have an input image here and we just extract interesting regions here. We send these regions now to a CNN to classify and then we get different classifications of what it thinks it is. So now let's take a look at the selective search algorithm. This attempts to segment the image into different groups by combining similar areas such as colors or textures. This could be interpreted as blobs or contours and proposes which of these regions it is interesting using some of the metrics within the classified algorithm. And it proposes these boxes here coming out of this segmentation type task and basically feeds these boxes here to the CNN to classify. When Selective Search found these interesting boxes, it takes these boxes and passes it through the CNN, as I said before. One was trained on ImageNet data set, so it, the ImageNet data set, so it's quite well-tuned and well exposed to a lot of data. And then what we do, we don't actually use a CNN directly for classification, although we can. We then use the SVM, I said it's a support vector machine classifier, to classify the CNN extracted features. We just compute the CNN features and feed it into another classifier, an SVM type classifier. So after the region proposal has been classified, we then use a simple linear regression to generate a tighter bounding box. But what exactly makes a good box? How do we know this box proposal over this guy here is a good box? Now, before we move on to other types of deep learning object detectors, we're going to discuss some metrics and how you assess object detectors. Now, this brings us to something called intersection over union or the IOU metric. So IOU is defined as the size of the union over the size of the prediction box. So typically an IOU over 0.5 is considered acceptable. Now let's take a look at this metric in a little bit more detail. Imagine this green box over this car here is our true human labeled box to identify the car. Remember, what we want in localized boxes, we don't want a box that predicts 
half of the car and then misses at the back wheel. Well, we don't want a box that covers the car, yes, but covers a lot of extra area around the car. We want a box to be nice and tight exactly over the object in question that we've detected. So let's imagine this red box here is the box our object detector has proposed. Now it looks fairly good. It covers roughly about 80% of the image. That's pretty good. Now let's take a look at the one on the right here. This box, which is actually covers a lot more of the car, covers almost 95% or more of the car, pretty much just missing out this little, little back piece here, covers even more. So technically, shouldn't this be classified as a better box than this? Well, that's not exactly what we want, though is it? We don't want our, our box to be all over here. So that's how the IOU metric is developed. It's the size of the union over the size of the prediction box. So the union basically is this zone here. What is this zone here? This zone is, we compute the area of this zone here. And the size of the prediction box is put over here. So what we do, okay, this is the size of the prediction box is always going to be bigger. So what this tells us is that we want this prediction box to cover as much of the green as possible without with being as small on the green, on the out, as small as possible over the green, essentially. I hope you understand that. So maybe I'm saying it wrong. But essentially, we just want this red here to cover the green as much as possible without being too much over it or too much inside of it. So that's how we get this metric here. So anything over 0.5 is considered fairly acceptable, in my opinion. A lot of, there are a lot more stricter guidelines when it depends on type of classifier you're building, I mean detector, but essentially 0.5 is a reasonable score. As you can see in this box over here, let's take a look at what the IOU would be. So the size of a union here looks, let's just estimate it at 50%, maybe even a bit, yeah, let's say 50%. And then size of prediction box is definitely maybe another 50% here. So you're going to end up with five, basically it's a 50% over 100%, which is double the size of this. So you're going to end up with something like 0.5. Whereas in this one, this one is basically, you can say this is 80% here. And this is area that is on the outside is probably like 0.6 of the ratio of this thing here. So you can understand how you get a much higher IOU with this metric here. Now, there's another problem when we have object detectors. Oftentimes, we will have multiple boxes being proposed over the same object, and the object detector may not even know it's doing it more than once, because remember, it doesn't actually know what's in the image. It is predicting interesting boxes in the image that it may or may not be correct. It's very hard to determine for algorithm to determine, is it two cars packed side by side? Is it one car? So what we have to do is, if we have our ground truth labels, which is the green box here, when we're testing our object detectors, you may often get multiple windows proposed like this. So there's another metric called mean average precision, or MAP for short, that we can use to get to when we have multiple boxes over the same thing. We can actually, over the same true label here, ground truth, we can actually use this metric now to determine the MAP score and that determines the form of accuracy of our object detector. So this one is actually a bit confusing. You can read some pretty long blogs explaining this metric that will help you understand. However, for now, just remember, it's a metric used to determine the performance of the object detectors. So now, now that you understand the metrics, we can go back on to the evolution of deep learning object detectors. And let's take a look at something called fast RCNN, which is the evolution of RCNNs by the same researchers and what they did, they basically made some speed improvements over the original RCNN. The original RCNN was quite slow because it required three models to be trained separately and use them in conjunction when you're doing the classification type work execution in the end. And this required feature extraction model and SVM to predict a class and then a linear regression to tighten the bounding boxes in the end. So you can see in real time, this would be quite slow. So fast RCNN solved this problem by removing the overlap generated. Now, how? What they did is that they ran the CNN across the image just once using a technique called region of interest or ROI pool. So essentially the problem fast RCNN solved was instead of running the CNN to extract features on all different regions identified, what they did, sorry, they actually ran the CNN just once over the entire image and then used those features going forward into the second and third layers of models in the network. So even still, that wasn't fast enough. And the researchers developed an even faster RCNN and named it appropriately faster RCNN. However, note there is no fastest RCNN just yet. So what the researchers of the Microsoft research team did to speed up RCNNs, well, fast RCNNs, to give it the faster flavor, was that they eliminated the bottleneck that was involved when using selective search. So this sped up region proposals significantly as well. 
Which now brings us to something called single shot detectors or SSDs. So we've just discussed and linked the RCNN family and we've seen how successful they can be and how they evolved. However, typically they still run at roughly 7 frames per second, even on some fairly powerful hardware. However, SSDs and even YOLO are significantly faster and you can actually see some of the stats right here. This is the FPS as well. You can see YOLO and SSDs topping the FPS at 45 and 46 and you can see the different scores and in resolutions as well, okay? So how did SSDs improve speed so significantly? Well, SSDs use multi-scale features and they use something called default boxes instead of looking at interesting regions. And furthermore, they actually dropped the resolution of the images that were fed into the classifier itself. So this allowed SSDs to achieve near real-time speed performance with almost no drop in accuracy. And sometimes they actually saw improved accuracy when with well-trained SSDs. So this is a general SSD structure. It's composed of two main parts. There's the feature map extractor and VGG16 was used in the published paper, but however ResNet and DenseNet may provide better results now. And then they used a convolutional filter for the object detection part of it as well here. So you can read the paper and this link here if you want to get an in-depth explanation of it. But just to summarize, SSDs are definitely faster than faster RCNNs. However, they are less accurate in detecting smaller objects. Now, accuracy increases if we increase the number of default boxes. That allows us to get a more finer grid on the image. However, that actually slows down the speed as well. And what it does with multi-scale feature maps, it allows us to improve the optic detection at various scales. That's why we actually can increase the accuracy if we increase the density of the grid. So now, let's move on to YOLO. So the idea behind YOLO, instead of using a lot of different models and networks and different sections to do different things in the object detector, YOLO uses a single neural network that's applied to the full image and this allows YOLO to reason about globally across the image when generating its predictions. Now it is the direct development and evolution of something called Multibox. It basically takes Multibox, which was used for region proposal, and turns it into object recognition and then adds a softmax layer in parallel with the box regressor that combines everything into a box classifier as well. So you have the entire object detector built into it here. So how it works, it divides the images into regions and predicts bounded boxes and probabilities for each region. So YOLO then uses a full convolutional neural network allowing for inputs of various sizes. And I must say YOLO is one of the most impressive object detectors that have ever been built and so nice to use, to train, to evolve into different, different situations. So now let's take a further look at it. And by the way, if you want to read and learn more about YOLO, you can click this link here or go to the site here to read the actual paper. It's quite good and actually it's surprisingly entertaining as well. So how exactly does YOLO work? Well, the image is firstly divided into an S by S grid. And if the center of an object falls into this grid cell, that cell is responsible for detecting that object. So let's say this dog here falls into the center of this cell here. This cell is responsible for saying that this is a dog, technically. However, let's move on to the other steps and we get a bigger picture of how it works. So each grid then predicts a number of bounding boxes and confidence scores for those boxes. And now confidence here is defined as the probability of an object multiplied by the thresholded IU score. And IU scores of less than 0.5 are typically just given a confidence level of zero. Then by multiplying the conditional class probability and the individual box confidence predictions, we get something called the class specific confidence score for each box. So you can see the steps here. We have all these bounding boxes here. You can see it proposes now a box region around this dog here. And this is all based on the class probability map. And then once it gets the final boxes here that it wants to classify, you can actually see the final detections here. And YOLO is quite good and effective in practice and quite fast. You can take a look at the YOLO architecture here as well. Or if you want, it, as I said, I encourage you to read this paper here. Now the architecture here has 24 convolutional layers and followed by two fully connected layers and then alternating one by one convolutional layers to reduce the feature spaces from preceding layers. Now this may not make much sense to you, but you can read the paper to actually understand the reasoning behind this design. So let's talk about the evolution of YOLO. Now it was voted the People's Choice Award paper at CVPR, that's a big computer vision conference. And then later, YOLO version 2 was later released and they were introduced batch normalization, which resulted in improvements in the map score by 2% and it was also fine-tuned to work at higher resolutions. This is fairly a high resolution for a computer vision optic detection that is working in real time, I must say, and it gave a 4% increase in map overall. 
Yolovision Trino was fine-tuned even further and introduced multi-scale training to help better detect smaller objects. So this concludes our discussion on YOLO. I hope you appreciated what YOLO has brought to the table. YOLO and SSDs are basically neck and neck in the two best type of object detectors out there. So now let's take a look at the summary of what we just learned. We learned basically the evolution of object detectors from horror casket classifiers and hogs to the first deep learning object detector, which was RCNNs. Then we introduced fast RCNNs and faster RCNNs. We then explored single shot detectors, SSDs, which are also quite good and give quite good performance. And then we took a high level overview of the YOLO object detectors, where YOLO Vision Tree is the latest one and it's quite good right now. So now let's move on to the next video where we start taking a look at implementing object detection with SSDs and YOLO in Python using OpenCV4. So stay tuned. Thank you.